Welcome back. In this lesson, we turn our focus from the fundamentals of statistics to look at the returns distributions and how they are shaped. We'll first look at the characteristics of normal distributions and then move on to look at skewed distributions and how to measure skewness. We'll also learn what kurtosis is and learn how to measure kurtosis. Let's begin. We're familiar with the normal distribution. What makes a distribution normal? A normal distribution has the following characteristics. Firstly, the mean and median are equal. Secondly, the distribution can be completely described by its mean and variance. And third, the characteristic that around 68% of the observations lie between plus minus one standard deviation from the mean, 95% between plus minus two standard deviations, and 99% between three standard deviations. A normal distribution is symmetrical on both sides of its mean. Some return distributions, however, are not symmetrical. Skewness is the extent to which a distribution is not symmetrical. A positively skewed distribution is characterized by many outliers in the right tail. It's skewed to the right because of its long right tail. Conversely, a negatively skewed distribution is characterized by many outliers in the left tail. It's skewed to the left because of its long left tail. Let's do a short exercise. Given a positive or right skewed distribution, can you determine where the mode is? This one is quite simple. The mode is the observation with the highest frequency. Therefore, it has to correspond with the peak of the frequency distribution. Next, in relation to the mode, where do you think the median is? To the left or to the right? We know that the median is the value which has 50% of the observations less than it and 50% of the observations more than it. Given that the distribution has a fatter right tail, we know that there are more observations to the right of the mode than to the left. So in order to balance it, the median has to be to the right of the mode. And finally, with respect to the mode and the median, where do you think the mean is? Again, refer to the fatter right tail. This indicates that there are more outliers or extreme values at the positive side. Remember that the advantage of median over mean is that the median is less sensitive to outlier values than the mean. Knowing that the mean is more sensitive to outlier values, the mean has to be higher than the median in this case. Therefore, the mean is to the right of the median. So this is something you have to remember. For a positively skewed distribution, the mean is larger than the median, which is larger than the mode. Reverse the arguments and you get the reverse for negative or left skewed distributions. The mean is smaller than the median, which is smaller than the mode. For large samples, we can calculate the skewness using this formula. It's equal to the sum of the cubed deviations from the mean divided by the cubed standard deviations and by the number of observations. Note that the denominator is always positive, the standard deviation is always positive. The numerator can be positive or negative, depending on whether the positive or negative deviations are dominant. Hence, for a positive skewed distribution, the positive values are more dominant, causing the skewness measure to be positive. The reverse is true. For a negative skewed distribution, the negative values are more dominant, so the skewness measure is negative. Skewness values in excess of 0.5 indicate significant levels of skewness. Kurtosis is the degree to which a distribution is more or less peaked than a normal distribution. A distribution is leptokurtic when it is more peaked than a normal distribution. A distribution that is less peaked or flatter than a normal distribution is referred to as platykurtic. How do you remember which refers to the more peaked and which to the less peaked? One way to remember is that flat rhymes with plat, so the less peaked is platykurtic. Alternatively, you could remember the image of the platypus, which is quite flat. A distribution is mesokurtic if it has the same kurtosis as a normal distribution. Note that in the case of a leptokurtic distribution, the tails of the distribution are fatter than that of the normal distribution. 
When modeling investment returns, this suggests that assets with leptokurtic distribution are more risky than those with normal distribution. Hence, the study of the kurtosis of a distribution is important in risk management applications. To measure kurtosis, we calculate the sample kurtosis of the distribution. The formula for sample kurtosis looks similar to the sample skewness formula. The only difference is that you raise the numerator and denominator to the fourth power. Again, like sample skewness, this formula is only valid for large sample size. The sample kurtosis of a normal distribution is 3, hence any number above it suggests that the distribution is leptokurtic, while any number below 3 suggests a platokurtic distribution. This scale is sometimes adjusted to excess kurtosis, where positive values indicate leptokurtic distribution, while negative values indicate platokurtic distribution. The understanding of skewness and kurtosis is critical in risk management. Research has shown that most securities returns tend to exhibit skewness and kurtosis. In general, greater positive kurtosis and more negative skewness indicates increased risk. This is because of the fatter left tail, which indicates a higher probability of extremely large negative outcomes. That's all for this short lesson. Make sure you're able to identify the various skewed distributions and kurtosis effects and understand their risk characteristics. See you at the next topic. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.